Hi everybody, Jeremy here. I wanted to share with you a few highlights of our latest panel debate on climate change, this time on the tricky science of extreme weather attribution. It means asking if events like heat waves and floods can be blamed on climate change. Here's Shakir Philip, an expert in extreme weather events and global warming. It's hard to say that it was only climate change uh, if an extreme weather event happens, because extreme weather events have always happened and will always continue to happen. But nowadays it's more um, influenced by climate change. Absolutely ages ago, when I started doing this job, scientists always told me there was no way that you could link one extreme weather event to climate change. So what happened? What happened mostly is that the climate change signal became so much stronger. So that's, uh, I think, the main reason why it is different now. I was thinking, for instance, for the heat waves, clearly we have some events I mentioned before where we can say without human-induced climate change, it could not have happened. We are not talking about a single temperature um, value that is attributed to climate change, but we're talking about a set of events. So all, all, all temperature events higher than a certain threshold this set of events, this we can attribute to climate change. It's when we're talking about an ensemble of data sets that we, we have the confidence to say that, you know, the, the increased greenhouse gases in the atmosphere, the, the fossil fuel that we're burning has made this event perhaps 10 times more likely than it otherwise would have been if we had a pre-industrial type atmosphere. One of the reasons for doing these extreme weather attribution studies is that the people in power have a lot of questions. If we look back to this uh, flooding uh, in 2021, uh, we had a lot of uh, 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 government people and administration people asking us, uh, OK, that's, it's, climate change has changed the intensity and changed the possibility. What can we do as a politician or a person in the administration? And the other use for attribution studies is potentially groundbreaking. Somebody's asking, can we legally blame the EU for climate change and prosecute them? Have you ever heard of successful climate-related lawsuits? We see more and more that actually climate questions are coming into courts in different ways. I mean, that, that's one possible way is assigning blame, so saying who is responsible in the end for the emissions we have had. Uh, and basically what are the consequences of those emissions because uh, they are basically damages. Somebody has to pay for this. <laughs> I don't think that um, our studies can be used straight away to, to really define a number that, or an amount of money that should be given to a specific country. But I think it is important to realize uh, whether climate change did play a role and whether we should actually help them. So we can quantify in terms of uh, historical emissions which countries have um, put in approximately which proportion of emissions in the atmosphere. But in terms of figuring out that 1% did this damage, no one can ever do that because the atmosphere is enormous, right? There are legal efforts underway. Check out online the case of the Peruvian farmer who's suing the German energy company RWE. But it may take years for those kinds of efforts to come to fruition. The other reason for doing this extreme weather attribution is much closer to home. Why are you really doing it, Shaq? Because we tend to think that everyone knows that climate change is happening, but actually that's not true. So whenever an extreme event happens, it's a really good opportunity to show to the people that are actually living there that climate change is happening. It's fascinating work and you can hear a lot more about it by clicking on the link in the description and watching the full one hour panel debate and head over to euronews.com slash climate now for the latest news from Copernicus on how our planet is changing. I'll see you soon.